channel page Thank for me. You. Yeah, I'll be very brief because you all read it as best as I am, but I'm pleased to introduce Mike, I should say Dr. Hartshorn, he's a MD from UNM, Pharmacological Department. His write-up was very interesting. He started out as a um, started out as a seminary student. Then he had a change of heart. He joined the army in Vietnam, which is kind of interesting. So he went into Vietnam as a psychiatric medic, I believe, in Vietnam. And so after doing that turn, he went to UNM, uh, studied biology, chemistry, with which he followed up with a MD, or I mean medical studies at UNM. And then he worked at the VA hospital in radiology imaging, but he was also a professor at UNM where he taught radiology. And I guess he's an emeritus professor at UNM. So he's got quite a distinguished character, uh, background and characteristics. And somehow he got involved with the Locomotive Railroad Society. So we'll hear more about the quality aspects of that. So Mike. It's okay, I'm used to working in a room where everybody's got me outclassed, so all I have to do is see if the controls still work. Thanks for inviting me. I, I haven't had a chance quite like this before. I keep hearing the word quality, and I keep thinking that all that's implied in the work that we're doing on a steam locomotive. We'll see if you agree at the end here. Let me tell you a little bit about the, uh, the group that I'm working with first, and the object of our our efforts, which is a big steam locomotive that was built in 1944 as part of the war effort. Thirty of these things were built to the same design. It turns out to be the biggest of its class that was ever built. And <clears throat> typically, this machine ran from Kansas City to San Diego and back hauling passenger trains uh, during World War II. And then uh, as the railroad scrambled into diesels, they finally had its last run on Christmas Eve in 1953. It was shoved into a city park a little bit later. We know that it was shopped here in Albuquerque at the old back shops, if anybody's ever been in those buildings. And we've gotten one lucky historical picture where if you look carefully at the locomotive in the front row, it's actually ours, the 2926. With a little bit of ceremony, the railroad shoved it into uh, a park uh, in November 1st, on, uh, 1956 and <clears throat> donated it to the city of Albuquerque, and it started rusting. Uh, little kids went down to play on it. Uh, any kid that grew up in Albuquerque at that time will tell you that they, they climbed up on it. Did you fall off? Did you steal anything out of the cab? I don't think so. Somebody well, else got there I first. Up the time I got there. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, and it sat there with the sprinklers hitting it and uh, asbestos under the jacket, holding water against steel, which is a disaster uh, in the making. <clears throat> but was enamored of a lot of people in Albuquerque. Uh, the group that I work with now started in the late 90s very informally with the idea that, hey, it's in great shape, it needs a little paint, we can get it uh, down to those old back shops, something magic will happen, and a few months later it's under steam. The guys who had that fantasy are all gone. <laughs> yeah. As soon as it started looking like work, they got gone. <laughs> The, the key effort we are uh, embarked on is to make a 2900 locomotive run again. There are only six others in, or five others in existence, and none of them will ever be restored. The guy in the middle started this thing. He was a he was a pharmacy guy, bad taste in shirts, <laughs> <laughs> and really lousy uh, administrative skills. But he had this gleam in his eye because, as a young man, he'd been a fireman on this locomotive, and he thought, how difficult could it be? We got the locomotive from Mehrbacher really easy. We told him it was covered with asbestos. He said, fine, sold it to us for a dollar, and said, now, get it out of my park. <laughs> uh, that was a $165,000 effort. A, a group from uh, Berlin, uh, also with uh, representatives from Hertford, Texas, brought some large equipment, and we laid temporary track right past the Creamland Dairy, and over a two-and-a-half-day interval, uh, pulled it with big D9 caterpillars down the city streets. Uh, that, that, we had to go to uh, a number of people in the city to make sure that they thought that was okay, starting with uh, the cops and ending with people who mined the, the pipes and things that are under the streets and gas lines and little things like that. Uh, got us as far as first and all, and we were trapped on a siding that at least was connected to the main line. Then they rebuilt the big eye, and if we weren't out of there, we weren't going to get out of there after the uh, new construction was done. 
So we got a locomotive trapped on First and Manola. It was time to get organized because the founder of the group and his successor both bailed out. Um, you know Frank Gerstle. Oh, Frank. It's because he quit that I got this lousy job. Okay. <laughs> Burn that up to him if you want. And we started doing the things you have to do. We got bylaws, we registered as a 501c3 nonprofit, we got a business license, and we started getting audited and that sort of thing. There's Frank. We had the, we had the Constitutional Convention from hell, and we have a, a working group now that's legal in the state of New Mexico, according to the Attorney General. And at that point, it started getting interesting. My first degree, which uh, somebody forgot to mention, uh, I was a social worker. And so basically, <laughs> What I did was I ran gangs. Uh, I, I did gang work all over New Mexico, which is kind of what I'm back to doing now. We've got people from every conceivable walk of life. This is a retired postman. Uh, our safety officer is a retired safety officer from the VLA. Uh, the guy who just stepped down as toolmeister was a Lutheran minister who would yell at you in German if you didn't put the tools back where they belong. <laughs> got a retired uh, Air Force uh, pilot flying test uh, does a lot of our uh, uh, fundraising electronically. Uh, a businesswoman that takes care of our books, and we really like young, thin, live, muscular <laughs> people that can get into bad places and do work for us. Volunteers. Our our secretary is uh, kind of a double threat. Pretty good in the office and pretty good wrench at the same time. Uh, we've got strong support from the 412 Plumbers and Pipefitters Union. Uh, they're uh, to Danny and Carlos can weld anything, and what they can, our chief mechanical officer can. Uh, broke down retired, semi-retired university professors and a few kids. Don't have a lot of kids, unfortunately. I mean, we're in a kid category. Uh, we're competing with hormones and iPhones and things like that, and steam locomotives are, are definitely last. We love machinists. Machinists were the first people at our work site that got air conditioning and heating in their container. <laughs> and we've got any, anybody you would hope down there came from a different place and a different background. None of us ever did this work before. Nobody ever restored a steam locomotive. None. Uh, and we don't babysit. We have jokes every once in a while. We can't take little kids and put them in an industrial environment uh, and, and take care of them for you while you go gallivanting around and so forth. So if you're underage, uh, we have some restrictions on when and how you can work. Where are we? A couple of you have been there. Overhead view, down by 8th Street, uh, north of city center. Um, in the sawmill district, there's a GSA warehouse and then a bunch of Bureau of Indian Affairs warehousing and a spur, which was put in in 1937 here. Uh, it was in pretty bad shape when we got it. It was not used for many decades uh, because now stuff comes in on trucks. They don't bring it in on, on uh, box cars anymore. We, we cornered Heather Wilson when she was in an office in an elevator and, and begged for her to help us get this piece of track. We knew about it. We knew that it wasn't being used. We knew that it belonged to the government. She was about as government as we could find. And elevator speeches in Albuquerque are really brief because the elevators don't go very far. She agreed to twist some bureaucratic arms for us, and we now have a license from the federal government to occupy the site, which was pretty much overgrown when we got there. We cleaned it up. In the year 2002, a couple of old timers, they were old AT and SF employees before BNSF took over, went to bat for us with the Federal Railway Administration and got permission to move our locomotive with no brake system on a mainline track. That is just not wow. done. You, you can't do that. But we did, and it didn't take very long actually. We put a, an engine on either end of it and took it back down to the Alvarado Transportation Center and then shoved it out into the neighborhood. When we got there, we had a sheet of concrete and a locomotive, which was not enough. You can't work on much that way. So we started doing all the things to build a RIP site. In, in railroad talk, that's repair in place site. So our rip side, we, we, we put up our first little shack and it became the world headquarters. It was really nice when we moved in. It's a little more shop worn now, uh, but that's kind of the, uh, the nerve center for the organization. It's where we have all of our drawings, which we're still looking for. We don't have a complete set yet. Uh, we put up a, <clears throat> a shed to have a convenience store so that when you come down and you need a, a nice baseball hat or a 2926 t-shirt, we can accommodate. We got a machine shop.